everyone. I just wanted to kind of go over my lathe setup. Um, basically, I've converted a drill press into a makeshift lathe. There's a lot of videos on the internet on how to do that, so I'm not really going to do an instructional video on that. But what I am going to do is kind of show you uh, what I've done. I've taken a, a, an ordinary bolt and I've run it through the grinder to sharpen the end into a point. And that makes my spur, which I've bolted to this base plate. For the chuck end, all I've done is I've taken a bolt like this, cut the bolt off, sharpened this to a point, and then uh, I take my angle grinder and I grind several points onto this coupling nut. And then I've just screwed it in until the point comes through and glue it into place. And I wind up with this. And that's basically what it is. Pretty easy setup. Uh, and it's good enough for turning some lures. I've kind of wanted to make a popper for quite some time. Never made one before, um, but it's kind of what comes to mind when I think of classic wooden lures. I want to make this one out of poplar, and uh, the reason I like poplar so much is it's very durable, and it's got a nice grain, which makes it easy to work with. You can see I've got the front and rear attachment points uh, a little bit longer. They're about an inch worth of embedment, and I want those angled slightly upward reason for that is to increase the pull-out strength. I also want to have a glass rattle and I want to orient that front to back so that it maximizes the effectiveness for every pop. I've also got the ballast slightly forward of the center of gravity to help increase stability and prevent drifting. Obviously you want it on the bottom to keep the lure upright. Okay, I've put a mark on this bit right here, a little V, so that I can index to my block of wood. That lets me realign this to the piece of wood perfectly every time. That gives me the perfect impression of the spur. And once I have that, I'm going to harden that with super glue to help prevent it from digging in any further. And then I'll put a little dab of automotive grease on that hole just to help it spin a little bit better. I'm going to put a little super glue around on this because sometimes it slips and this keeps it from doing that.
So I'm going to drill the holes uh, for the hardware. Now I like to use a piece of tape as a depth gauge so that I don't go too far. Okay, next we're going to drill the eyes. Alright, the next step is to drill the hole to put the rattle in and that's going to go on the bottom here and it's going to run that way. That way when I jerk the lure forward the rattles move back and forth. This is going to be at a little bit of a tricky angle. I know that looks pretty ugly, but we're going to clean it up once we get the uh, rattle installed and you won't even be able to tell it's there. Yeah. Here we're adding a little bit of lead to the ballast hole. I'm going to be careful not to fill it too much because you've got to be able to cover it at the end. Okay, so what I'm going to use is uh, one of these 5 millimeter glass rattles. And I'm just going to put that right inside that hole we drilled earlier. And then what I'm using as a filler is baking soda. You can use sawdust if you want, but I think it's a little coarse for this kind of work and this uh, this baking soda gets down in these small crevices and fills them really nicely now I tend to put a little bit more than is strictly necessary because um, you can always sand it off if you don't have enough you're going to come back and do another layer so to me it's faster just to sand it off and then we're just going to put a few drops of super glue on that and that'll set it instantly now you see it's running over the edges and everything that doesn't matter we're gonna we're gonna put super glue over the entire bait here in a minute to seal it so while I'm filling, the other thing I want to do is put a little dab here in the eye. I 
because what I've found is that after I've painted it and I'm doing my clear coat, if there's a void behind the eye, that epoxy is going to want to suck in behind it for whatever reason. So I'm just going to put a little dab of this in there to kind of flatten that hole out so that the eye will sit nice and flush and it'll give me a better clear coat finish. So I'm sealing this with super glue and I prefer super glue for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is the area that I'm fishing at is full of rocks, like big boulders, and I'm not very good at casting so I tend to bounce this off the rocks pretty regularly. So I want a nice tough shell. The other reason is um, you can use polyurethane, you can use a couple of coats of polyurethane, but it takes a while for that to dry versus this super glue dries really fast. So I can move on to the next step and I don't have to wait. Okay, the next thing we need to do after we seal the bait is to smooth it out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with about a 80 grit, 60, 80 grit, something like that to knock off the really high points of glue and then I'm going to switch to a 320 grit to do the final pass. Uh, I'm going to use this um, small bench vise. Uh, what I've done is I've replaced the metal teeth with um, this cutting board material which I've put in place but even with that it still uh, could dent the wood so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold up a paper towel and put that in there just to give it a little bit more cushioning and padding uh, so that I don't damage the wood. Alright, the next thing we need to do is make the hardware and to make that I use this stainless steel lock wire. This is a .041 diameter and uh, it has a great corrosion resistance being stainless steel and it's very strong. So I put the wire in one end, tighten it down and then what I've got here in my vise is just a small little nail, something I can pull against. So I want to twist this wire to right about there. That's the tightest I can get the wire to coil before it starts trying to coil again. You can over tighten it and it will eventually break. But what you're looking for is to get a nice tight twist.
Okay, once we've got our lure all sanded, it's going to be time to install the hardware. What I use to glue that into place is this 30 minute epoxy. Uh, it gives me plenty of working time and uh, I think it gives it a very strong hold. I've, I've used super glue before, but the working time is pretty, pretty short and I don't feel like it holds as strong. When I'm mixing a small batch, I just get a little piece of tape. Stick it on the counter here. And then I squared out equal amounts. The most important thing with epoxy is to mix it really well. Once we've got it mixed, I'll just put a little bit on the hardware and the threads. And then I'm going to kind of screw it in, so to speak. Well, the hole has a little bit of extra room in it, but I like to kind of screw it in so that as much of that epoxy will go in the hole as possible. Clean the excess off with a paper towel. And I'm going to get it oriented the way I want it to be. There you
set up for that, but... I also painted this leopard frog pattern off camera, so I thought I would bring it along to show you as well. You may not be able to quite see what happens here, but as I make my cast, I can feel the lure pop off. Check this out. I have been trolling around for over an hour. There's one that just flew right off. Never stopped looking. Here's, you can see where that boat is over there. That's where it broke off. And it drifted all the way over here. Spit it out.
water was extremely clear this day, and I could see the fish following the popper. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get him to commit. <laughs> 